Dear parents, we request you to mute yourselves throughout this program as even the slightest sound may distract the speaker and disrupt the program. We also request you to click on the speaker's view on the right hand side top corner so you may enjoy a closer view of the speakers. Eloquence. Eloquence is the power to translate a truth into language, perfectly intelligible to the person to whom you speak. A very good evening to everyone present here. We warmly welcome you, parents, respected teachers and mentors, our worthy participants, and our dear fellow students to this virtual elocution for the academic session 2020-21. I request Tanish Narang, Lavisha Gihani, and Wani Baranwal to begin this auspicious occasion with blessings from the Almighty. Is there any removal of difficulties? Safeguard, say praise be God, He is God, all are His services, all are by, by His beatings. Thy name is my healing, O oh my God, and remembrance of Thee is my remedy. Your dance to thee is my home, and love for thee is my companion. Thy mercy to me is my healing, and my succor in both this world and the world to come. Thou verily art the all bountiful, the all knowing, the all wise. Ombu, Om Bua, Om Swaha, Om Maha, Om Janaha, Om Tapaha, Om Satyam, Om Bur Bua Swaha, Tasavitur Varnenyam. Bhargo Devasya Dhimahi Diyo Yona Prachodaya Om Atma Jyoti Prasopratam Brahma Burbhuva Swaro Om Shanti 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 Ladies and gentlemen, the power of the word is more powerful than that of a sword. Language and etiquette are the manifestation of true education. It is noteworthy. It is noteworthy to witness that on this occasion, we recall with fondness the school's stage, the auditorium, with the portraits of the great educators looking on benignly as if to bestow their blessings upon us. As instead of the school's main auditorium, which has always been the venue of all events, we have the virtual platform this evening to express ourselves. It is said, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. Therefore, we have left no stone unturned to make the best use of this unique situation of the pandemic. And here we are gathered to express ourselves with poise and conviction. Now, I request Mansi Patel to begin the performances. Please pin the video. Thank you, Priyanshi. Good evening, everyone. We invite the first participant for today's event, 
she will deliver the first tablet to the hague by the divine educator abdul baha written in response to letters addressed to him by the executive committee of the central organization for durable peace where he calls upon all to take heed to the teachings of bahaullah extolling the equality of women and men the freedom of men and the voluntary sharing of one's property and the unity of religions presenting before you is anushka sashi from class 10th d an excerpt from abdul baha's tablets to the hague 17 december 1919 consider the flowers of a garden though differing in kind color form and shape yet in as much as they are refreshed by the waters of one stream revived by the breath of one wind invigorated by the rays of one sun this diversity increases their charm and adds unto their beauty thus when that unifying force the penetrating influence of the word of god takes effect the difference of customs manners habits ideas opinions and dispositions embellishes the world of humanity and this is praiseworthy this diversity this difference is like the naturally created dissimilarity and variety of the limbs and organs of the human body for each one contributes to the beauty efficiency and perfection of the whole when these different limbs and organs come mm. under the influence of man's sovereign soul and the soul's power pervades the limbs and members veins and arteries of the body then difference reinforces harmony diversity strengthens love and multiplicity is the greatest factor for coordination how unpleasing to the eye if all the flowers and plants the leaves and blossoms the fruits the branches and the trees of that garden were all of the same shape and color diversity of hues form and shape enriches and adorns the garden and heightens the effect thereof in like manner when diverse shades of thought temperament and character are brought together under the power and influence of one central agency the beauty and glory of human perfection will be revealed and made manifest not but the celestial potency of the word of god which rules and transcends the realities of all things is capable of harmonizing the divergent thoughts sentiments ideas and convictions of the children of men verily it is the penetrating power in all things the mover of souls and the binder and regulator in the world of humanity praise be to god today the splendor of the word of god has illumined every horizon and from all sects races tribes nations and communities souls have come together in the light of one word assembled united and agreed in perfect harmony thank you thank you anushka a 12 year old from canada spoke at the un earth summit and silenced the world for a few minutes ladies and gentlemen hold your breath for the same stunning speech recited by kunal sachdev of class 10c speech by severin suzuki at the un earth summit in rio de janeiro hello i'm severin suzuki speaking for echo the environmental children's organization we are a group of 12 and 13 year olds vanessa sadi morgan geisler michelle quay and me 
We waste all the money ourselves to come 6,000 miles to tell you adults, you must change your ways. Coming here today, I have no hidden agenda. I am fighting for my future. Losing my future is not like losing an election or a few points on the stock market. I am here to speak for all generations to come. I am here to speak on behalf of the starving children around the world whose cries go unheard. I am here to speak for the countless animals dying across this planet because they have nowhere left to go. We cannot afford to be not heard. I am afraid to go out in the sun now because of the holes in the ozone. I'm afraid to breathe the air because I don't know what chemicals are in it. I used to go fishing in Vancouver with my dad until just a few years ago, we found the fish full of cancer. And now we hear about animals and plants going extinct every day, vanishing forever. In my life, I have dreamt of seeing the great herds of wild animals, jungles and rainforests, full of birds and butterflies. But now I wonder if they will even exist for my children to see. Did you have to worry about these little things when you were my age? All this is happening before our eyes and yet we act as if we have all the time we want and all the solutions. I'm only a child and I don't have all the solutions, but I want you to realize, neither do you. You don't know how to fix the holes in our ozone layer. You don't know how to bring salmon back up a dead stream. You don't know how to bring back an animal now extinct. And you can't bring back forests that once grew where there is now desert. If you don't know how to fix it, please stop breaking it. I'm only a child, yet I know we are all in this together and should act as one single world towards one single goal. In my anger, I'm not blind and in my fear, I'm not afraid to tell the world how I feel. In my country, we make so much waste. We buy and throw away, buy and throw away. And yet Northern countries will not share with the needy. Even when we have more than enough, we are afraid to lose some of our wealth, afraid to share. Two days ago, here in Brazil, we were shocked when we spent some time with some children living on the street. And this is what one child told us. I wish I was rich. And if I were, I would give all the street children food, clothes, medicine, shelter, and love and affection. If a child on the streets who has nothing is willing to share, why are we who have everything Still so greedy? I'm only a child, yet I know if all the money spent on war was spent on ending poverty and finding environmental answers, what a wonderful place this earth would be. At school, even in kindergarten, you teach us to behave in the world. You teach us not to fight with others to work things out, to respect others, to clean up our mess, not to hurt other creatures, to share, not be greedy. Then why do you go out and do the things you told us not to do? You are deciding what kind of world we will grow up in. Parents should be able to comfort their children by saying, everything's going to be all right. We are doing the best we can and it's not the end of the world. 
but I don't think you can say that to us anymore. Are we even on your list of priorities? My father always says, you are what you do, not what you say. Well, what you do makes me cry at night. You grown up say you love us. I challenge you, please make your actions reflect your words. Thank you. धन्यवाद कुनाल शुभ संध्या मैं आदि सुरवे आप सभी का इस सुनहरे अवसर पर हार्दिक स्वागत करता हूं मेरे प्रिय श्रोतागण कम से कम शब्दों में बहुत कुछ कहना गागर में सागर भरने के समान होता है और यह सिर्फ कविता में ही संभव होता है बताइए कि हम में से ऐसा कौन नहीं है जो संकट आने पर निराश नहीं होता परंतु विपिदाओं में तत्पर जो बाहर निकलता है वह सोना बन जाता है काटे मिले या मिले फूल राहों से गुजरना होगा काटे मिले या मिले फूल राहों से गुजरना होगा आंधी आए तूफा आए कदम मिलाकर चलना होगा इफ यू वॉन्ट टू ओवरकम ऑल ऑब्स्टिकल्स वी हैव टू वॉक हैंड एंड हैंड टूगेदर वी शुड मूव अहेड विथ यूनिटी एंड फर्म बिलीव वाइल फेसिंग आर प्रॉब्लम तो आइए हमारे सामने एकता संदेश लेकर एक कविता प्रस्तुत करने जा रही है कक्षा दसवीं ड से आर्य भांगड़िया काव्य पठन श्री अटल बिहारी वाजपेयी द्वारा रचित कविता कदम मिलाकर चलना होगा बाधाएं आती है आए घिरे प्रलय की घोर घटाए बाधाएं आती है आए घिरे प्रलय की घोर घटाए पाओ के नीचे अंगारे सिर पर बरसे यदि ज्वालाए हाथों में हंसते हंसते आग लगाकर जलना होगा कदम मिलाकर चलना होगा आग लगाकर जलना होगा कदम मिलाकर चलना होगा हास्य रुदन में तूफानों में अमर असंख्यक बलिदानों में हास्य रुदन में तूफानों में अमर असंख्यक बलिदानों में उद्यानों में वीरानों में अपमानों में सम्मानों में उन्नत मस्तक उभरा सीना पीड़ाओं में पलना होगा कदम मिलाकर चलना होगा आग लगाकर जलना होगा कदम मिलाकर चलना होगा उजियारे में अंधकार में कल कछार में बीच धार में उजियारे में अंधकार में कल कछार में बीच धार में घोर घृणा में पुत प्यार में क्षणिक जीत में दीर्घ हार में जीवन के शत शत आकर्षक अरमानों को ढलना होगा कदम मिलाकर चलना होगा आग लगाकर जलना होगा कदम मिलाकर चलना होगा सम्मुख फैला अमर देह पद प्रगति चिरंतन कैसा अब सम्मुख फैला अमर देह पद प्रगति चिरंतन कैसा अब सुस्मित हर्षित कैसा श्रम श्लत असफल सफल समान मनोरथ सब कुछ देकर कुछ न मांगते पावस बनकर ढलना होगा कदम मिलाकर चलना होगा आग लगाकर जलना होगा कदम मिलाकर चलना होगा कुछ काटों से सज्जित जीवन प्रखर प्यार से वंचित यौवन कुछ काटों से सज्जित जीवन प्रखर प्यार से वंचित यौवन नीरवता से मुखरित मधुबन परहित अर्पित अपना तन मन जीवन को शत शत आहुति में जलना होगा गलना होगा जलना होगा गलना होगा कदम मिलाकर चलना होगा आग लगाकर जलना होगा कदम मिलाकर चलना होगा धन्यवाद थैंक यू आर्य सुधा मूर्ति इज एन एपिटोम ऑफ सिंपल लिविंग एंड एक्स्ट्रा ऑर्डिनरी वैल्यूज शी इज ऑल्सो शी इज ऑल्सो अ राइटर एंड स्टोरीज हैव इंस्पायर्ड मेनी Ayan Banatwala of Class 10C will now narrate one such story by Sudha Murthy. Bombay to Bangalore by Sudha Murthy. It was the beginning of summer. I was boarding Uttyan Express at Gulbarga railway station. My destination was Bangalore. As I boarded the train, I noticed that the second class reserved compartment was jam packed with people. I sat down and was pushed to the corner of the berth though it was only meant for three people to sit on there were already six of us sitting on it 
the, the ticket collector came in and started checking people's tickets and reservations. Suddenly, he looked in my direction and asked, What about your ticket? I have already shown my ticket to you, I said. Not you, madam. The girl hiding below your berth. Hey, come out. Where is your ticket? I then noticed that someone was hiding below my berth. The ticket collector yelled at her and the girl came out of hiding. She was thin, dark, scared and looked like she had been crying profusely. She must have been about 13 or 14 years old. She had uncombed hair and was dressed in a torn skirt and blouse. She was trembling and folded both her hands. The collector started forcibly pulling her out of the compartment. Suddenly, I had a strange feeling. I stood up and called out to the collector. Sir, I will pay for a ticket, I said. Then he looked at me and said, Madam, if you give her 10 rupees, she will be much happier with that than with the ticket. I did not listen to him. I told the collector to give me a ticket to the last destination, Bangalore, so that the girl could get down wherever she wanted. Slowly, she started talking. She told me that her name was Chitra. She lived in a village near Bidar. Her father was a coolie and she had lost her mother at birth. Her father had remarried and had two sons with her stepmother. But a few months ago, her father had died. Her stepmother started beating her often and did not give her enough food. Oh, she was tired of that life. She did not have anyone to support her and so she left home in search of something better. By that time, the train had reached Bangalore. I said goodbye to Chitra and got down from the train. My driver came and picked up my bags. I felt that someone was watching me. When I turned back, Chitra was standing there and looking at me with sad eyes. But there was nothing more that I could do. I had already paid for a ticket out of compassion, but I never knew that she was going to be my responsibility. I told my driver to take us to my friend Ram's place. Ram ran separate shelter homes for boys and girls. We at the Infosi Foundation supported him financially. I thought that Chitra could stay there for a few days and we could talk about her future once I got back from my career, from my tours. I was not sure if Chitra would even be there. But to my surprise, I saw Chitra looking much happier than before. Ram suggested that Chitra could go to a high school nearby. I immediately agreed and said that I would sponsor for her expenses for as long as she continued to study. I left the shelter knowing that Chitra had found a home and a new direction in life. I got busier and my visits to the shelter reduced to once a year. But I always inquired about Chitra's well-being over the phone. I knew that she was studying well and that her progress was good. Chitra obtained her diploma with flying colors. She also got a job in a software company as an assistant engineering testing. When she got her first salary, she came to my office with a sari and a box of sweets. I was delighted. One day, when I was in Delhi, I got a call from Chitra. She was very happy. Akka, my company is sending me to USA. I wanted to meet you, but you are not here in Bangalore. Years passed. Occasionally, I received an email from Chitra. She was doing very well in her career and she was posted across several cities in the USA and was enjoying life. I silently prayed that she should always be happy wherever she was. Years later, I was, I was invited to deliver a lecture in San Francisco. After the lecture, I was planning to leave for the airport. When I checked out of the hotel room and went to the reception counter to pay the bill, the receptionist said, Madam, you don't need to pay us anything. That lady over there 
has already settled your bill. She must know you pretty well. I turned around and found Chitra there. She was standing there with a young white man and wore a beautiful sari. She was looking very pretty with short hair. Her dark eyes were beaming with happiness and pride. As soon as she saw me, she gave me a brilliant smile, hugged me and touched my feet. I was overwhelmed with joy and did not know what to say. I was very happy to see the way things had turned out for Chitra. But I came back to my original question. Chitra, why did you pay for my bill? That is not right. Suddenly, sobbing, she said to me, because you paid for my ticket from Bombay to Banyol. Thank you. Thank you, Ayan. Rasika Shroteho, Vasudeva Kutumbakam, Manje, the world is my family. Yata Arta Kewe of Rasnahi, Kiprutu Ajasar was the Shatla, Prantatla Lokani, a Kineva Premane Rahabi. Param to Sarwani, a Katsmoktia Kutumbatil, Vepti Pramane Kerime in Rahabi. Kitty Mahan Havicha Adunik Durasanchacha of Pokarnani, upon as Ekamekanji do legged lawhood. Pun Manacha Larikit Pazutat Yat Prashna the Utter Denara, Ek Adjatmi Kutara Sadar Karidahe, Yatta the Huiko Savidarti, Aditya Bilari. एक आध्यात्मिक कोतारा रूही संस्थेचा सेवा संकल्प पुस्तकातील एक महत्त्वपूर्ण उतारा मानव जातीचे एकत्व ज्या बागेत सर्व झाडे सारख्याच रंगाची व आकाराची असतात तिथे सौंदर्य कमी आढळते ती निष्प्रभ व साचेबंद असतात ज्या बागेत सर्व झाडे वेगवेगळ्या रंगाची गंधाची एकमेकांच्या बाजूला वाढतात अशी बाग डोळ्याला आल्हाददायी असते अशा बागेतील फुलात भिन्नता असली तरी ती सारख्याच पावसाने टवटवीत होते आणि एकाच सूर्याचा उभारा मिळवते हेच मानव जातीलाही लागू आहे मानव जाती ही कित्येक वंश वर्ण याची बनवली आहे परंतु सर्व सारखेच परमेश्वराकडून येतात आणि सर्वांचे मूळ एकच आहे संगीतात जसे वेगवेगळे सूर पूर्ण संगीत बनवण्यासाठी एकत्र मिळतात तसेच मानवी परिवारातील विविधताही प्रेम व सलोख्यास कारणीभूत ठरले पाहिजे ऐक्य हे अस्तित्वासाठी आवश्यक आहे प्रेम हे जीवनाचे प्रत्यक्ष कारण आहे भौतिक जगात सर्व वस्तूंचे अस्तित्व त्यांच्या एकीमुळे आहे त्यांची मूळ तत्त्वे आकर्षणाच्या कायद्याने एकत्र बांधली आहेत आकर्षणाचा कायदा हा सुंदर फुलाच्या स्वरूपात विशिष्ट तत्त्वांना एकत्र आणतो परंतु जेव्हा आकर्षण काढून घेतले जाते तेव्हा त्या फुलाचे विघटन होईल आणि त्याचे अस्तित्व संपेल भाऊल्ला यांनी मानव जातीच्या एकीकरणासाठी आराखडा बनवला आहे ऐक्याच्या या वर्तुळात आपण सर्वांना आकर्षित करण्यासाठी हर प्रकारे प्रयत्न केला हवा आपण जेव्हा वेगवेगळे वंश वर्ण राष्ट्र व मतमतांतरेंना भेटतो तेव्हा आपण या भेदांना आपल्यामधील कुंपण होऊ देऊ नये आपण मानव जातीतल्या सुंदर फुलाप्रमाणे सगळ्यांना समजून घेतले पाहिजे आणि एकीने राहण्यात आनंद मानला पाहिजे मानव जातीचे एकी दर्शवणाऱ्या काही युक्ती पुढील प्रमाणे आहेत एकोप्याची छत्र छाया उभारण्यात आली आहे आपण एक मेकांत स्पर्धे समजू नका आपण एकाच झाडाची फुले व पाने आहोत ऐक्याचा प्रकाश हा इतका सामर्थ्यशाली आहे की तो पूर्ण जग प्रकाशमय करण्यात समर्थ आहे आपले मन ऐक्याकडे वळवा आणि त्याच्या प्रकाशाने प्रकाशित व्हा आपण एकत्र या आणि वाद निर्माण करणाऱ्या कारणांचे निर्मूलन करण्याचा निर्णय घ्या धन्यवाद थँक यू आदित्य बॅलेड इज अ पोयम a ballad is a song a ballad is a story a ballad presented by reet toshniwal of class 10c quash 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 the frog and the nightingale by vikram set once upon a time a frog Croaked away in Pingle Bog every night from dusk to dawn. He croaked on and on and on. Other creatures loathed his voice, but alas, they had no choice. Quash, quash, quash.
But one night, a nightingale in the moonlight, cold and pale, perched upon the sumac tree, casting for her melody. Dumbstruck sat the gaping frog, and the whole admiring bog stared towards the sumac, rapt. And when she had ended, clapped. Toads and teals and tiddlers, captured by her voice, cheered on and rapture. Bravo! To divine! Encore! So the nightingale once more, quite unused to such a flowers, sang till dawn without a pause. Next night, when the nightingale had cleared her throat to sing, she was startled by a croak. Sorry, was that you who spoke? She inquired. Then the frog hopped towards her from the bog. Yes, the frog replied. You see, I am the frog who owns this tree. In this bog, I've long been known for my splendor baritone. Did you, did you like my song? Not too bad, but far too long. The technique was fine, of course, but it lacked a certain force. Oh, the nightingale confessed, greatly flattered and impressed that a critic of such note had discussed her art and throat. I don't think the song's divine, but oh well, at least it's mine. That's not much to boast about, said the heartless frog. Without proper training, such as art and few others can supply, you'll remain a mere beginner. But with me, you'll be a winner. Now the nightingale, inspired, flushed with confidence and fire, with both art and adoration, sang and was a huge sensation. Though next morning it was raining, he began her vocal training. But I can't sing in this weather. Come, my dear, we'll sing together. Just put on your scarf and sash. Kuhaha, kuhash, kuhash. Every day, the frog who sold her songs for silver tried to scold her. You must practice even longer till your voice grows like mine stronger. We must aim for better billings. You still owe me sixty shillings. Day by day, the nightingale grew more sorrowful and pale till the birds and beasts grew tired at a voice so uninspired, and the ticket of his gross crashed, and she grew more morose. For her years were now addicted to her flowers, quite unrestricted, and to sing into the night, all alone gave no delight. Now the frog puffed up with rage, Brainless bird, get on stage. Use your wits and follow fashion. Puff your lungs out with your passion. Trembling, terrified to fail. Blind with tears, the nightingale heard a mountain silence. Tried, puffed up, burst away and died. Said the frog, I tried to teach her, but she was a stupid creature. Well, Poor bird, she should have known that your song must be your own. That's why I sing with panache. Kuhaha, kuhash, kuhash. And the frog hop of the frog fled and rivaled through the bog. Kuhash, kuhash, kuhash. Thank you. Thank you, Reed. Bonsoir, my dear parents teachers and friends. We will begin now our French elocution program with my friend Aditi Gupta who will share us a story on the Thirsty Crow. 
The story begins with a lumpy crow that was thirsty and was finding water to drink. After some time, the crow finds a pot of water but can't reach the water as it is too low. Then it gets an idea of dropping stones inside the water to raise the level and eventually quenches its thirst. We have a new Aditi. Le corbo asua. Il y avait d'une fois un corbo qui avait soif. Il a cherché longtemps, partout mais il n'y avait na pas d'eau. Finalement, il y avait une maison avec un pot d'eau dans le jardin. Il y avait trois pots d'eau et le corbo ne pouvait pas boire. Il a beaucoup réfléchi. Il a eu une bonne idée. Il a pris des calots et il les jeté à la maison. Le haut est monté. Le corbeau est à bout et il s'est envolé très content. Merci. Thank you. Thank you, Aditi. Abdul Bha says, Prejudices of any kind are the destroyers of human happiness and welfare. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Anavi Chahare of Class 10B. She will present another excerpt from Abdul Baha's tablet to The Hague. An excerpt from Abdul Baha's tablet to The Hague, 17 December 1919. In every period, war has been waged in one country or another and that war was either due to religious prejudice, racial prejudice, political prejudice or patriotic prejudice. It has therefore been ascertained and proved that prejudices are destructive of the human edifice and as long as these prejudices persist, the struggle for existence must remain dominant and bloodthirstiness and rapacity continue. Therefore, even as was the case in the past, the world of humanity cannot be saved from the darkness of nature and cannot attain illumination except through the abandonment of prejudices and the acquisition of the morals of the kingdom. If this prejudice and enmity are on account of religion, consider that religion should be the cause of fellowship, otherwise it is fruitless. And if this prejudice be the prejudice of nationality, consider that all mankind are of one nation, all have sprung from the tree of Adam. Adam is the root of the tree, that tree is one. And all these nations are like branches, while each individuals of humanity are like leaves, blossoms, and fruits thereof. Then the establishment of various nations and the consequent shedding of blood and the destruction of the edifice of humanity result from human ignorance and selfish motives. As to the patriotic prejudice, this is also due to absolute ignorance, for the surface of the earth is one native land. Everyone can live in any spot on this terrestrial globe. Therefore, all the world is man's birthplace. These boundaries and outlets have been devised by man. In the creation, such boundaries and outlets were not assigned. Europe is one continent. Asia is one continent. Africa is one continent. Australia is one continent. But some of the souls from their personal motives and selfish interests have divided each one of these continents and considered certain part as their own country. God has set up no frontiers between Germany and France. They are continuous. Yet in the first centuries, some selfish souls for the promotion of their own interests have assigned boundaries and outlets and have day by day attached more importance to these until this led to intense enmity 
bloodshed and rapacity in the subsequent centuries. In the same way, this will continue indefinitely. And if this conception of patriotism remains limited within a certain circle, it will be the primary cause of world's destruction. No wise and just person will acknowledge such imaginary distinctions. Every limited area that we call our native country, we regard as our motherland, whereas the terrestrial globe is the motherland of all and not any restricted area. In short, for a few days, we live on this earth and eventually we are buried in it. It is our eternal tomb. Is it worthwhile we should engage ourselves in bloodshed and tear one another to pieces for this eternal tomb? Nay, far from it, neither is God pleased with such conduct, nor will any sane man approve of it. Thank you. Thank you, Anavi. शुभ संध्या सुस्वागतम हूँ धर्मजीत राठौर धोरण दस क न विद्यार्थी आज 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 आ सोनेरी अवसर पर आप सब न हार्दिक स्वागत करू छु प्रिय श्रोताओ हम आप सबनी समक्ष धोरण दस क न विद्यार्थी काव्य गांधी एक वार्ता प्रस्तुत कर सार्ता शीर्षक है एक भूल आ वर्ता में मृत्यु अनिवार्य है टाड़ी शकात नहीं विधाता लेख में कोई मीनमेक कर सकत नहीं पोता जात पर अभिमान न करव जेन नाम तुम नाश निश्चित है ए हकीकत जीवन की अंतिम सत्य तरीके समझा वी ऑल नो देट देर इज नो वन अबाउ गॉड एंड विथ दिस पॉइंट आई वुड लाइक टू बिगन आर सेशन विथ दी हेल्प ऑफ अ वेरी ग्रेसफुल स्टूडेंट नेम्ड काव्य गांधी फ्रॉम क्लास टेन सी He will deliver a short story, a bull that will boost your happiness. This will prove our point and also make you understand that no one can deny his own death. Abhar Dharmajit. Varta, a bull. A shilpi hato. The pathar mathi, sundar murti banav to hato. One day, one boy murti khareed vaave chhe. उपाय सोचा शरीर जेवा बीजा छ पुतला बनाव्या आ पुतला ने वच्चे उभो रहे तो कोई ओखी न सके अद्भुत आ पुतला शिल्पी मन में मन में खुश थवा लगे कि हम यमदूते खाली हाथ पास जव पड़ से अमास नो दिवस आिल्पीए एक ऊर्जा में छ पुतला सूता हो गोठव्या आ पुतला वे सूई गय समय थो यमदू तो आचया ऊर्जा में एक न बदले सात शिल्पी जो विचार पड़ी गया सात चार शिल्पी ने वो ओखी न सकिया एक यमदूत विचार कर बोलियो शिल्पी बनाला पुतला खरे खर अद्भुत शिल्पी ने एक भूल थी गई है कई भूल शिल्पी थी तरत बोली जवाई बस आज भूल यमदूते कहू जो तो चुप चाप पड़ी रहो होत तो अमर मे ते शोध काम खूब मुश्किल यमदूत शिल्पी ने लाई विदाय थे 
આ વાર્તામાંથી આપણને બોધ મળે છે કે મૃત્યુને કોઈ તાળી શકતું નથી અને ન બોલવામાં નવ ગુણ આભાર Thank you, Kavya. Once upon a time, a good many years ago, we now invite Sarvadna Joshi for, of class 10th A to narrate a story of a traveler and his journey. The Child's Story by Charles Dickens Once upon a time, a good many years ago, there was a traveler. and he set out upon a journey he traveled along a rather dark path for some little time without meeting anything until at last he came to a beautiful child so he said to the child what do you do here and the child said i am always at play come and play with me so he played with the child the whole day long and they were very merry they had plenty of the finest toys in the world and the most astonishing picture books but one day of a sudden the traveler lost the child he called to him over and over again but got no answer so he went upon his road and went on for a little while without meeting anything until at last he came to a handsome boy so he said to the boy what do you do here and the boy said i am always learning come and learn with me so he so he learned with the child about jupiter and juno and the greeks and the romans but they were not always learning they had the merriest games that ever were played they had such dear friends and so many of them they all were young like the handsome boy still one day in the midst of all these pleasures the traveler lost the child as he has lost the boy he called and called but got no answer then he went on his way so he went on and on until he came to a young man so he said to the young man what do you do here and the young man said i am always in love come and love with me so he went away with that young man and presently they came to one of the prettiest girls that ever was seen so the young man fell in love directly they were engaged at the christmas time and were going to be married very soon one day the traveler lost them as he had lost rest of his friends and after calling to them to come back which they never did went on his road so he went on for a little while until at last he came to a middle aged gentleman so he said to the gentleman what are you doing here and his answer was i am always busy come and be busy with me so he began to be very busy with that gentleman and they went on through the woods together the gentleman was not alone but had a lady of about the same age with him who was his wife and they had children who were with them too so they all went on together through the woods cutting down trees carrying burdens and working hard sometimes they came to a long green avenue and which it opened in the deeper woods then they would hear a very little distant voice crying father father i am another child stop for me and presently they would see a very little figure growing larger as it came along running to join them when it came up they all crowded round it and kissed it and welcomed it then they all went on together sometimes 
they came to several avenues at once. Then they all stood still. And one of the children said, Father, I am going to see. And another said, Father, I am going to India. And another said, Father, I am going to heaven. So with many tears at parting, each child went on his way. And the child who went to heaven rose into the golden air and vanished. At last, there were so many partings that no children were left. And only the traveler, the gentleman and the lady went on their way in company. So they came to an avenue which was darker than the rest and the lady stopped. My dearest, I am summoned and I go to the heaven and she was gone and only the traveler and he were left alone together and they went on and on together until they came to very near to the end of the wood so near that they could see the sun shining red before them through the trees yet once more the traveler lost his friend while he broke his way through the branches he called and called but got no answer so he came to an old man sitting on a fallen tree so he said to the old man what do you do here and the old man said with a calm smile i am always remembering come and remember with me so the traveler sat down by the side of old man face to face with the serene sunset and all his friends came back softly and stood around him the beautiful child the handsome boy the young man in love the father mother and children every one of them was there and he had lost nothing so he loved them all and was always pleased to watch them all and they all honored him and loved him and i think the traveler must be yourself dear grandfather as this is what you do to us and we do to you thank you thank you sarvatnya shubh sandhya main priyanshi sachdev aap sabhi ka is sunhare avsar par hardik swagat karti hu mere priya shrota gan duniya mein aisa kaun sa antar hai jo mitaye nahi mitta zarurat hai koshish karne ki फिर वह सुंदर विश्व ही क्यों न हो जी हाँ यह सुंदर विश्व एक विशाल वृक्ष की तरह है जिसमें रहने वाले हम सभी लोग विविध आकार की पत्तियां फूल फल और शाखाएं हैं ब्लेस्ड ब्यूटी सेज दैट यू आर ऑल द फ्रूट्स ऑफ द सेम ट्री एंड द लीव्स ऑफ द सेम ब्रांच इन दिस वे ही कंपेयर दिस वर्ल्ड ऑफ एग्जिस्टेंस टू अगल ट्री एंड ऑल इट्स पीपल टू इट्स लीव फ्लावर्स एंड फ्रूट्स तो आइए हमारे सामने सम्मानता का संदेश प्रस्तुत करने जा रही है कक्षा दसवीं ड से गौरांगी अग्रवाल अब्दुल बहा द्वारा लिखित हेक के नाम पहली पाती में से कुछ चयनित अंश 17 दिसंबर 1919 हे दुनिया के लोगों सत्य का सूर्य संपूर्ण पृथ्वी को आलोकित करने और मानव समुदाय को आध्यात्मिक बनाने हेतु उदित हो गया है सराहनीय है उसके परिणाम और फल आपार है उस कृपा से उत्पन्न पावन प्रमाण यह एक अमिश्रित और विशुद्ध कृपा है यह इस विश्व और इसके सभी लोगों के लिए प्रकाश है यह समरसता और बंधुता है और प्रेम एवं एक सूत्रता यह वस्तुतः करुणा और एकता है और अजनबीपन की समासी यह संसार के सभी लोगों के साथ संपूर्ण सम्मान और स्वतंत्रता के साथ एकजुट होना है आशीर्वादित सौंदर्य कहते हैं तुम सब एक ही वृक्ष के फल एक ही शाक की पत्तियां हो इस तरह उन्होंने अस्तित्व के इस संसार की तुलना एक ही वृक्ष और उसके सभी लोगों की तुलना उसकी पत्तियों फूलों और फलों से की है 
शाखा पर बाहर आना और पत्तियों तथा फलों का पल्लवित होना आवश्यक है और इस विश्व वृक्ष के सभी हिस्सों के आपसी संबंध पर तथा पत्तियों का विकास और बाहर और फल की मधुरता निर्भर है इसीलिए सभी मानवों को चाहिए कि वे दृढ़ता से एक दूसरे को सहारा दे और अनंत जीवन की कामना करें और इसलिए ईश्वर के प्रेमियों को चाहिए कि वे इस नश्वर संसार में दृश्य और अदृश्य जगतों के सौम्य सम्राट द्वारा भेजी हुई कृपाएं और आशीर्वाद बने उन्हें अपनी दृष्टि को पावन बना लेना चाहिए और समस्त मानव जाति को अस्तित्व के वृक्ष की पत्तियों और बहारों और फलों के रूप में देखना चाहिए उन्हें सदा अपने बंधुओं में से किसी एक के लिए कोई दयापूर्ण कार्य करने किसी को प्रेम करुणा विवेकपूर्ण सहायता देने की चेष्टा करनी चाहिए उन्हें किसी को भी अपने शत्रु के रूप में नहीं देखना चाहिए या उनका बुरा भी नहीं सोचना चाहिए संपूर्ण मानव जाति को अपना बंधु समझना चाहिए बल्कि पूर्वाग्रह से मुक्त रहते हुए कोई भी विभाजन रेखा ना खींचते हुए विदेशी को अंतरंग अजनबी को अपना सहचर मानना चाहिए इस युग में प्रभु की दहलीज पर कृपा प्राप्त व्यक्ति वह है जो सबको अपनी निष्ठा का प्याला पिलाता है जो अपने शत्रुओं को भी कृपा का आभूषण प्रदान करता है और अपने पतित आतत आय के लिए भी सहायता के हाथ बढ़ाता है यह वह व्यक्ति है जो अपने घोरतम शत्रु के लिए भी एक स्नेहिल मित्र होगा ये शिक्षाएं हैं आशीर्वादित सौंदर्य की ये परामर्श है महानतम नाम के धन्यवाद थैंक यू गौरांगी आई रिक्वेस्ट श्रेया फिर के टू कंटिन्यू थैंक यू मानसी गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन द डे द पावर ऑफ लव ओवर रूल्स द लव ऑफ पावर the world will know peace i welcome lavisha rehani of class 10a to recite a speech by the famous comedian charlie chaplin in the movie the great Di Di dictator speech by charlie chaplin from the movie the great dictator i'm sorry but i don't want to be an emperor that's not my business I don't want to rule or conquer anyone. I should like to help everyone if possible. Jew, Gentile, black man, white. We all want to help one another. Human beings are like that. We want to live by each other's happiness, not by each other's misery. We don't want to hate and despise one another. And this world has room for everyone and the good earth is rich. and can provide for everyone the way of life can be free and beautiful but we have lost the way greed has poisoned men's souls has barricaded the world with hate has goose stepped us into misery and bloodshed we have developed speed but we have shut ourselves in machinery that gives us abundance has left us in want our knowledge has made us cynical our cleverness hard and unkind we think too much and feel too little more than machinery we need humanity more than cleverness we need kindness and gentleness without these qualities life will be violent and all will be lost soldiers don't give yourself to brutes men who despise you and slave you who regiment your lives tell you what to do what to think and what to feel who drill you diet you treat you like cattle use you as cannon fodder don't give yourself to these unnatural men machine men with machine minds and machine hearts you are not machines you are not cattle you are men you have the love of humanity in your hearts You don't hate, only the unloved hate, the unloved and the unnatural. Soldiers, don't fight for slavery, fight for liberty. In the seventeenth chapter of Saint Luke, it is written, 
the kingdom of god is within man not one man not a group of men but in all men in you you the people have the power the power to create machines the power to create happiness you the people have the power to make this life free and beautiful to make this life a wonderful adventure then in the name of democracy let us use that power let us all unite let us fight for a new world a decent world that will give men a chance to work that will give youth a future and old age a security by the promise of these things brutes have risen to power but they lie they do not fulfill that promise they never will dictators free themselves but they enslave the people now let us fight to fulfill that promise let us fight to free the world to do away with national barriers to do away with greed with hate and intolerance let us fight for a world of reason a world where science and progress will lead to all men's happiness soldiers in the name of democracy let us all unite thank you thank you lavisha namaskar rashik shrote ho kavita manje aplya bhavnanche pratirup aste kavita manje saptasuranchi maifil aste कविता म्हणजे श्रावणातील हिरवळ असते कधी पावसाची सर कधी बालकवीची फुल राणी असते कधी मातीचा सुगंध कधी वेलीवरील दव बिंदू असते थेट जाऊन बोलण्यापेक्षा कविताच बेस्ट असते म्हणूनच तर ऐकूया यत्ता दहावी क तील विद्यार्थिनी ईश्वरी जाधव आपल्यासाठी सादर करत असलेली एक सुंदर कविता काव्य पठन मराठीतील सुप्रसिद्ध कवी दासुवेध्य लिखित कविता पुस्तक पुस्तक सांगतात गोष्ट वाहून गेलेल्या दिवसांची पुस्तक सांगतात गोष्ट वाहून गेलेल्या दिवसांची युगा युगांची विश्वाची माणसाची आजची कालची उद्याची एका एका क्षणाची झाड हिरव्या पानांनी सळसळाव अशा सुखाची निष्पन्न फांदीच्या एकाकीपणासारख्या दुःखाची वाऱ्यावर डुलणाऱ्या रंगीत फुलांची युद्धात आई बाप मेलेल्या मुलाची जिंकलेल्या रणाची हरलेल्या मनाची प्रेमाची द्वेषाची श्वासाची ही पुस्तक सांगतात गोष्ट मग ऐकणार ना गोष्टी पुस्तकांनी सांगितलेल्या पुस्तक काही सांगू इच्छितात तुमच्या सावलीत रांगू इच्छितात पुस्तकात पक्ष्यांची चोच बोलते पुस्तकात हिरवगार रान हलते पुस्तकात असतो झऱ्याच्या पाण्याचा अवखळपणा पुस्तकात दिसतात पर्या वागडताना पुस्तकात असतो शेपना सणांचा विद्वंस कायाकृतात बुडालेला महाभारतातला कंस पुस्तकातल्या शब्दांना करोनेची झाक आहे सर्व संतु निरामय विज्ञानाची हाक आहे पुस्तक म्हणजे वसुदेव कुटुंबक आयुष्य प्रथावरचा नया कदम मग येणार ना तुम्ही या रस्त्यावर चालण्यासाठी छे हो वाट मुळीच अवघड नाही रस्त्यावरून चालताना आपण दुकानावरच्या पाठ्या वाचतो तेवढ्याच सहज पुस्तकही वाचायचे बास अहो वाचायला तर लागा म्हणजे पोहायला लागाल हव्या त्या ठिकाणी सांगू इच्छितात तुमच्या सावलीत रांगू इच्छितात तुमच्या सावलीत रांगू इच्छितात धन्यवाद थँक्यू ईश्वरी लेट अस नाव लिसन टू अनदर पायलट Summoned by the King by William Kite. Just a minute, just a minute. Just a minute. There is a Miss Power. Can you remove this last person? Yes, Mr. Shinde. Yeah, there is a disturbance. Somebody is from behind. Okay, now it's fine. It looks like. 
Okay, Mr. Yogesh is looking into it, sir. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Sorry for the interruption. Viviana, yes. Viviana, please continue. Summoned by the King, by William Kite. Awakened by a sound from a sound sleep, by the pounding at his door, he leaped from his warm bed. His feet moved swiftly across the floor. Just outside the door, standing in the pouring rain, a messenger with scroll in hand, a summons from the king. It read, I need your help, old friend, but you can leave your sword at home. For what I need from you this time is not a matter of blood or bone. He donned the first thing he could find, then dashed out to the royal coach. He was led to the king's own chamber in the castle tower, high in the sky. The king sat at a table there, a strange look in his eye. I've come to help you, my good king. At least I vow to try. Ask of me anything you will, for you know, for you, I would die. I have been pondering the meaning, said the king, of the most perplexing thing, but try as I have, I cannot find the answer within my brain. Of those within my kingdom, you are the wisest of them all. You served my father's court when he was but a boy so small. He told me it ever became a time when the answers I had not found, I need only summon you to help me. So come in and enlighten me. Come, sit yourself down. Ask of me what you will, my king. I shall answer if I can. For I serve you now, as I served your father, when he was the king of this great land. I have been thinking of my mother and how when she died before she sleeps, she cries over the death of my dear father. And I wonder what happens when one dies. We are told to believe in the afterlife, yet no one from death has returned. How can there be any life at all once the body has been burnt? In less than a heartbeat, these words came from the old knight. What makes you think, my good king, that afterlife has anything to do with sight? The afterlife is a thing the living cannot see. Yet sometimes in my mind, I hear long gone voices call to me. I feel the presence of those long departed now. They speak to me and touch me still, though I understand not how. Tonight, when you summoned me, I heard your father's words. Go to him. He needs you, he said. And within me, so many memories stirred. When your mother cries at night, she's calling out for what has been. Your father hears and comes to her. At that point, her crying ends. The afterlife is real, my good king. All that happens when one dies. Now, my good king, if I may, of you, I shall take my leave. I myself have spirits to talk with, yet upon this eve, humbled by the ease with which the old knight had answered him, the king knew in truth the knight was indeed the wisest of all men. Yes, my wise old friend. You may be on our way. I owe now a debt though that I do not know how to repay. You have served this kingdom well. Your deeds in battle have many times saved your king. And now on this dark and rainy night, you have saved my befuddled brain. As the old knight stood to go, he uttered this last line. Just rule this kingdom well, for I did once and does now belong to a dear friend of mine. Thank you. Thank you, Viviana. Bonsoir, parents and my dear friends. 
I welcome Drishti Gupta of Class 10 B to tell us an extract about La, La Petite France by Antoni de Saint Exupéry. It is about a snake who swallows a big cat without chewing and sleeps for six months during digestion. Be a venue, Adrishti. Voila, a extra delivery. Et bar, en tonie de saint exupré, la petite prend galema, men la son, quatre vingt tenant. Lorsque j'ai six ans, j'ai vu, une fois, une magnifique marche, dans ce livre, sa la forfait voche, qui s'appelait History Vac. Ça représentait un serpent boa, qui avait un fou. Voilà la copie du dessin. Au dessin dans le livre, le serpent boa avait les, les, les poids tout entier sans la marcher. Ensuite, il ne pouvait pas bouger et il dormait pendant les six mois de la digestion. J'ai lu beaucoup préféré sur les aventures de la jungle et mature. J'ai reçu avec un créa de coulier à tresser ma première dessin, ma dessin numéro 1. Merci. Thank you. Thank you, Drishti. Kavya Gandhi of Class 10C will now narrate a story of the legend. Leo Tolstoy, a famous Russian writer who has created many masterpieces such as War and Peace and Anna Karenina. Work, Death and Sickness by Leo Tolstoy. This is a legend current among the South American Indians. God, say they, at first made men so that they have no need to do work. They needed neither houses, nor clothes, nor food, and they all lived till they were a hundred and did not know what illness was. When after some time, God looked to see how people were living. He saw that instead of being happy to live their life, they quarreled with one another. And each caring for himself had brought matters to such a pass that far from enjoying life, they cursed it. Then God said to himself, this comes of the living separately, each for himself. And to change this state of things, God so arranged matters that it became impossible for the people to live their life without working. To avoid the suffering from cold and hunger, they were now obliged to build dwellings and to dig ground and to grow and gather fruits and grains. Work will bring them together, thought God. They cannot make their tools, repair and transport timber, build their houses, sow and gather their harvest spin and weave and make their clothes, each one alone by himself, it will make them understand that they should work together and live in unity. Time passed on and again God came to see how men lived and whether they were now happy. But he found them living worse than before. They worked together but not all together. One group tried to snatch work from the other group. And they hindered one another. Wasting time and strength on the struggles made things went ill with them all. Having seen that this too was not well, God decided so as to arrange things that men should not know the time of his death but might die at any moment. And he announced this 
to them. Knowing that each of my at any time, thought God, they will not by grasping at gains that may last so short time for the hours of the life allotted to them. Time passed John, and again God came to see how men lived. And he saw that their lives was as bad as ever. Those who were strongest subdued those who were weaker, killing some and threatening others with death. And it came about that the strongest and the descendants did no work and suffered from weariness of idleness. While those who, had, who were weaker and had to do work beyond their strength suffered from lack of rest. Each, each set of men feared and hated the other. And this made the lives of men yet more unhappy. Having seen all this, God to man matters, decided to make use of his last means. He sent all kinds of sickness among men. God thought that when men will be exposed to sickness, they will understand that those who are well should have pity on those who are ill and should help them that they themselves fall ill. Those who are well, they might in turn help them. And again, God went. But when he came back to see how men lived when they were subject to sickness, they would understand that he saw that their lives was worse than before. Those who were strong enough to make others work had also forced them to wait back even in the time of their sickness. But they did not, in their turn, look after others who were ill. Though, while those who had to do work for others, who had to look after others when they were sick, were so worn with their work that they had no time to look after their own sick, but left it without attendance. Moreover, people considered many of the illness infectious and fearing to catch them, they not only avoided the sick, but also separated themselves from the one who attended sick. Then God said to himself, if even these meals will not make understand men wherein the happiness lies, then let them taught by suffering. And God left men to themselves. And left to themselves, men lived long before they understood that they all ought to and might be happy. Only in the very latest times, a few of them have begun to understand that the work ought not to be a bugbear for some and slavery for others, but should be a common and happy opportunity uniting all men. They have begun to understand that the death constantly threatening each of them, the only reasonable business that each man should do is to spend years, months, hours, and minutes allotted to him in unity and love. They have begun to understand that the sickness, far from dividing men, should, on the contrary, give opportunity for loving union with one another. Thank you. Thank you, Kavya. Courage is not absence of fear, but triumph over it. The famous words of the great leader, Nelson Mandela, we will hear a speech recited by Utkash Nigam of class 10th B. Mr. Nelson Mandela's inaugural address as the president of South Africa. Your majesties, your highnesses, distinguished guests, comrades, and friends. Today, all of us do by our presence here and by our celebrations in other parts of our country and the world, confer glory and hope to newborn liberty. Out of the experience of an extraordinary human disaster that lasted too long, must be born a society of which all humanity will be proud. 
that spiritual and physical oneness we all share with this common homeland explains the depth of the pain we all carried in our hearts as we saw our country tear itself apart in a terrible conflict and as we saw it spurned outlawed and isolated by the peoples of the world precisely because it has become the universal base of the pernicious ideology and practice of racism and racial oppression we the people of south africa feel fulfilled that humanity has taken us back into its bosom that we who were outlaws not so long ago have today been given the rare privilege to be host to the nations of the world on our own soil we thank all our in distinguished international guests for having come to take possession with the people of our country of what is after all a common victory for justice for peace for human dignity we trust that you will continue to stand by us as we tackle the challenges of building peace prosperity non sexism non racialism and democracy we appreciate the role that the masses of our people and their political mass democratic religious women youth business traditional and other leaders have played to bring about this conclusion we would also like to pay tribute to our security forces in all their ranks for the distinguished role they have played in securing our first democratic election and the transition to democracy from bloodthirsty forces which still refuse to see the light the time for the healing of the wounds has come the moment to bridge the chasms that divide us has come the time to build is upon us we have at last achieved our political emancipation we pledge ourselves to liberate all our people from the continuing bondage of poverty deprivation suffering gender and other discriminations we commit ourselves to the construction of a complete just and lasting peace we dedicate this day to all the heroes and heroines in this country and the rest of the world who sacrificed in many ways and surrendered their lives so that we could be free their dreams have become reality freedom is their reward we are both humbled and elevated by the honor and privilege that you the people of south africa have bestowed on us as the president of south africa which is democratic united non racial non sexist to lead our country out of the valley of darkness we understand it still that there is no easy road to freedom we know it well that none of us acting alone can achieve success we must therefore act together as a united people for national reconciliation for nation building for the birth of a new world let there be justice for all let there be peace for all let there be work bread water and salt for all let each know that for each the mind the soul and the body have been free to fulfill themselves never never and never again shall it be that this beautiful land will again experience the oppression of one by another and suffer the indignity of being the skunk of the world the sun shall never set on so glorious a human achievement let freedom reign god bless africa thank you thank you utkarsh
Yes, sir. Dharmajit, continue. Continue. We are waiting. Priya Shrodao. હવે આપ સૌની સમક્ષ ધોરણ દસ ક નો વિદ્યાર્થી તનિષ્ક નારંગ ગુજરાતી સાહિત્યના સુપ્રસિદ્ધ કવિ શ્રી કરસનદાસ માને ચર્ચિત કવિતા મને એ સમજાતું નથી પ્રસ્તુત કરશે જેમાં સામાજિક અવ્યવસ્થા અને વિરોધાભાસ નું સચોટ નિરૂપણ કરવામાં આવ્યું છે તેમાં ફૂલ અને પથ્થર અમીર અને ગરીબ ગાય અને આખલો મેહુલ મહેલ અને ઝૂંપડી ના વિરોધાભાસ દ્વારા સામાજિક અસમાનતાનું વર્ણન કરવામાં આવ્યું છે Shri Karsan Das Manik is a very popular and well-known poet. From his brilliant collection of poems, we had picked up a very historic one, Mane E Samjatu Nati, which will be recited by one of my helping friend, Tanishk Narang, from Class 10th C. Kavita Mane E Samjatu Nati Mane E Samjatu Nati Mane E Samjatu Nati Ke Aau Shane Thai Chhe Mane E Samjatu Nati Ke Aau Shane Thai Chhe ફૂલડા ડૂબી જતા અને પથ્થરો તરી જાય છે મને એ નથી સમજાતું કે આવશાને થાય છે તડવડે તરસ્યા જ્યાં વાદળી વેરન બને તડવડે તરસ્યા જ્યાં વાદળી વેરન બને તે જીરનમાં દુમ સંદાર વરસી જાય છે મને એ નથી સમજાતું કે આવશાને થાય છે ઘર હિના ઘૂમે હજારો ઠોકરા તા ઠેર ઠેર ઘર હિના ઘૂમે હજારો ઠોકરા તા ઠેર ઠેર મનેલુ ને લીલા શમખેતરો સો આખલા ચરી જાય છે મને એ નથી સમજાતું કે આવશાને થાય છે છે ગરીબોના કુબામાં તેલનો ટીપો દોહેલું છે ગરીબોના કુબામાં તેલનો ટીપો દોહેલું ને શ્રીમંતોની ખબર પર ઘી ના ઘેવા થાય છે ને શ્રીમંતોની ખબર પર ઘી ના ઘેવા થાય છે મને એ નથી સમજાતું કે આવશાને થાય છે ફૂલડા ડૂબી જતા અને પથ્થરો તરી જાય છે Thank you, Tanish. When darkness presses in on us, we find peace and guidance in the words from the holy writings. Priyanchi Thakur of Class 10C will recite an excerpt from Abdul Baha's tablet to the Hague. An excerpt from Abdul Baha's tablet to the Hague, 17 December 1919. consequently that which is conducive to association and attraction and unity among the sons of men is the means of life of the world of humanity and whatever causes division repulsion and remoteness leads to the death of human kind and if as you pass by fields and plantations where the plants flowers and sweet smelling herbs are growing luxuriantly together forming a pattern of unity this is an evidence on the fact that that plantation and garden is flourishing under the care of a skillful gardener but when you see it in a state of disorder and irregularity you infer that it has lacked the training of an efficient farmer and thus has produced weeds and tares it therefore becomes manifest that amity and cohesion are indicated of the training of the real educator and dispersion and separation a proof of savagery and deprivation of divine education a critic may object by saying that people's races tribes and communities of the world are of different and varied customs habits taste character inclinations and ideas that their thoughts and opinions are contrary to one another and how therefore 
Is it possible for real unity to be revealed and perfect accord among human souls to exist? In answer, we may say that differences are of two kinds. One is the cause of annihilation and is like the antipathy existing among warring nations and conflicting tribes who seek one another's destruction, uprooting one another's families, depriving one another from rest and comfort and unleashing carnage. And this is blameworthy. The other kind, which is a token of diversity, is the essence of perfection and the cause of the appearance of the divine bestowals. Thank you. Dhanyavad Priyanchi. Priya Shutagan, Dunya mein kush logo ke paas jeevan jeene ke liye paryaap saadhan nahi hai. Ve jeevan jeene ke liye sangarsh karte rete hai. Parantu, isi dunya mein kush logo ke paas अधिक संपन्नता होने के बावजूद भी उन्हें संघर्ष करना पड़ता है इनकी बीमारी को सुनकर हम भी कहना चाहते हैं मुझको भी तो लिफ्ट करा दे बंगला गाड़ी चार दिला दे मुझको भी बीमार बना दे ऐसा ही बीमार बना दे नाउ लेट अस हियर एज टू वाइस ऑफ पीपल डिस्पाइट है प्रोस्पेरिटी कंटिन्यू टू स्ट्रगल इन लाइफ मेरे प्रिय श्रुतागन तो चलिए एक लाइलाज बीमारी का वर्णन करने हमारे सामने प्रस्तुत करने जा रही है कक्षा दसवीं कर से निष्ठा फिर गद्या पठन हरिशंकर परसाई जी द्वारा लिखित लेख अपनी अपनी बीमारी हम उनके पास चंदा मांगने गए थे चंदे के पुराने अभ्यासी का चेहरा बोलता है वे हमें भाग गए हम भी उन्हें भाग गए चंदा मांगने वाले और देने वाले एक दूसरे को बखूबी पहचानते हैं लेने वाला जान लेता है कि यह देगा या नहीं देने वाला भी समझ लेता है कि यह बिना लिए डल जाएगा या नहीं हमें बैठते ही समझ में आ गया कि वे नहीं देंगे वे भी शायद समझ गए कि यह डल जाएंगे फिर भी हम दोनों पक्षों को तो अपना कर्तव्य निभाना ही था हमने प्रार्थना की तो वे बोले आपको चंदे की पड़ी है हम तो टैक्सों के मारे मर रहे हैं सोचा यह टैक्स की बीमारी कैसी होती है बीमार या बहुत देखी है मगर यह टैक्स की कैसी बीमारी है जिससे वे मर रहे थे वे पूरी तरह से स्वस्थ और प्रसन्न थे तो क्या इस बीमारी में मजा आता है यह अच्छी लगती है जिससे बीमार तगड़ा हो जाता है इस बीमारी से कैसा लगता होगा अजीब रोग है यह चिकित्सा विज्ञान में इसका कोई इलाज नहीं है बड़े से बड़े डॉक्टर को दिखाइए और कहिए यह आदमी टैक्स से मर रहा है इसके प्राण बचा लीजिए वह कहेगा इसका हमारे पास कोई इलाज नहीं है लेकिन इसके भी इलाज करने वाले होते हैं मगर वे एलोपैथी या होम्योपैथी बड़े नहीं होते इसकी चिकित्सा प्रदित अलग है इस देश में कुछ लोग टैक्स की बीमारी से मरते हैं और काफी लोग भूखमरी से टैक्स की बीमारी की विशेषता यह है कि जिन्हें लग जाए वह कहता है हाय हम टैक्स से मर रहे हैं और जिसे न लगे वह कहता है हाय हमें टैक्स की बीमारी ही नहीं लगती कितने लोग हैं कि जिनकी महत्वाकांक्षाएं होती है कि टैक्स की बीमारी उन्हें लग जाए हमें उन पर दया आई सोचा कहे कि प्रॉपर्टी से बेट यह बीमारी हमें दे दीजिए पर वे नहीं देते या खम्बक बीमारी ही ऐसी चीज है कि जिन्हें लग जाए उनसे प्यारी हो जाती है मुझे उनसे अर्षा हुई मैं उन जैसे ही बीमार होना चाहता हूँ उनका दुख देखकर मैं सोचता हूँ दुख भी कैसे कैसे होते हैं अपना अपना दुख अलग होता है उनका दुख था कि टैक्स मारे डाल रहा है अपना दुख है कि प्रॉपर्टी नहीं है जिसे अपने को भी टैक्स भरने का सौभाग्य प्राप्त हो हम कुल पचास रुपये चंदा नाम मिलने के दुख से दुखी हो रहे थे बड़े बड़े दुख है मैं बैठा हूँ मेरे साथ दो तीन बंधु बैठे हैं मैं दुखी हूँ 
मेरा दुख यह है कि मुझे चालीस रुपए का बिल जमा करना है और मेरे पास इतना रुखे नहीं है तभी एक बंधु अपना दुख बताने लगता है वह वह कहता है कि आ, मैंने आठ कमरों का मकान बनाने की योजना बनाई थी छह कमरे बन चुके थे दो के लिए पैसे की तंगी आ गई है वह बहुत बहुत दुखी है वह अपने दुख का वर्णन करता है पर मैं प्रभावित नहीं हो पाता उसका दुख कितना विकट है कि मकान को छह कमरे का नहीं रख सकता मैं उसके दुख से दुखी नहीं होता मेरे मन में बिजली कटने का खटका लगा हुआ है दूसरे बंधु पुस्तक विक्रेता है पिछले साल पचास हजार की किताबें पुस्तकालय को बेची थी इस साल चालीस हजार की भी की कहता है बड़ी मुश्किल है सिर्फ चालीस हजार की किताबें बेची ऐसे में कैसे चलेगा वे चाहते हैं मैं दुखी हो जाऊ पर मैं नहीं हो पाता मेरे मन में बिजली के बिल का खटका लगा हुआ है मैंने अपनी सौ किताबें को दे दी थी वे बीत गई अगर जब मैं पैसे मांगता हूँ तो वे ऐसे हंसने लगते हैं जैसे हास्य रस पैदा कर रहे हैं बड़े बड़ी मुश्किल है हम अपने पैसे मांगो तो उसे भी व्यंग विनोद में शामिल कर लिया जाता है मैं उनके दुख से दुखी नहीं होता मेरे मन में बिजली के बिल का खटका लगा हुआ है मेरे मन में मन में मुझे लगता है कि अपने बिजली के बिल को भूल कर मुझे इन सब के दुख में दुखी हो जाना चाहिए कहता हूँ क्या ट्रेजडी है मनुष्य जीवन की कि मकान को छह कमरे का नहीं सकता और कैसी निर्दय दुनिया है कि सिर्फ चालीस हजार की किताबें खरीदती है कैसा बुरा व्यक्त आ गया है ये तीनों प्रसन्न है कि मैं उनके दुखों से आखिर दुखी हो ही गया तरह तरह के संघर्ष में तरह तरह के दुख एक जीवित रहने का संघर्ष है एक संपन्नता का संघर्ष है एक न्यूनतम जीवन स्तर ना होने का दुख है एक पर्याप्त संपन्नता ना होने का दुख है ऐसे में कोई अपने दुख को लेकर कैसे बैठे सच है गरीब का दुख भी कोई दुख होता है सबको अपनी अपनी बीमारी धन्यवाद Thank you, Nishita. Now I welcome Aditi Gupta to proceed with the program. Thank you, Shreya. Good evening, everyone. The world of humanity has two wings. One is women, and the other men. Not until both the wings are equally developed can the bird fly. Abdul Baha. I now welcome Dean Sharma of Class 10D to recite a speech on equality. Speech by Emma Watson at the United Nations. Today we are launching a campaign called He for She. I am reaching out to you because we need your help. We want to end gender inequality, and to do this, we need everyone involved. This is the first campaign of its kind at the UN. We want to try to mobilize as many men and boys as possible to be advocates for change. And we don't just want to talk about it; we want to try and make sure it's tangible. I was appointed as goodwill ambassador for UN Women six months ago, and the more I spoke about feminism, the more I realized that fighting for women's rights has too often become synonymous with man hating. And if there is one thing I know for certain, it is that this has to stop. For the record. Feminism, by definition, is a belief that men and women should have equal rights and opportunities. It is the theory of political, economic, and social equality of the sexes. But sadly, I can say that there is no country in the world where women can expect to see these rights. No country in the world can say that they have achieved gender equality. These rights I consider to be human rights, but I am one of the lucky ones. My life is a sure privilege just because my parents didn't love me less because I was born a daughter. My school did not limit me because I was a girl. My mentors didn't assume that I would go less far just because I might give birth to a child one day. These influences were the gender equality ambassadors that made me who I am today. They may not know it, but they are the inadvertent feminists that are changing the world today. We need more of those, and if you still hate the word, it's not the word that's important. 
it's the idea and the ambition behind it. Because not all women have received the same rights I have. In fact, statistically, very few have. Men, I would like to take this opportunity to invite, to extend you a formal invitation. Gender equality is your issue too, because to date, I've seen my father's role as a parent being valued less by society, despite my need of his presence as a child as much as my mother's. I've seen young men suffering from mental illness, unable to ask for help for fear it would make them less of a man. I've seen men made fragile and insecure by a distorted sense of what constitutes male success. We don't often talk about men being imprisoned by gender stereotypes, but I can see that they are. And when they are free, things will change for women as a natural consequence. If men don't have to be aggressive in order to be accepted, women won't feel compelled to be submissive. If men don't have to control, women won't have to be controlled. Both men and women should feel free to be sensitive. Both men and women should feel free to be strong. I want men to take up this mantle so that their daughters, sisters, and mothers can be free from prejudice, but also so that their sons have permission to be vulnerable and human. If you believe in equality, you might be one of those inadvertent feminists I spoke of earlier. And for this, I applaud you. We are struggling for uniting word, but the good news is we have a uniting movement. It is called He for She. I invite you to step forward, be seen, and ask yourself, if not me, who? If not now, when? Thank you very, very much. Thank you, Ring. Rasika Shrote Ho. Kutuma Matle, Ki Doya Samur Eta, Te Karatu Aur Nare Jesta Monday. Kar Matle, Ki Jestancha Asushakat Nahi. Jesta Matle, Ki Distat Te Ajazova. Karat, Kunatari, Dag Darara Asawat Lakto, Kutumu Ekatra Tevai Chilter. Kiwa, Kutumatil Shista Dasune, Yachi Kavadari Hinare Hidon Vecti Mato Munja Ajazova. आज ही दोनी व्यक्ति मतो घरातुन हरोले दिसता है ही करुण आपले पुड़े सादर करता है इत्यादि धावी दी दिल अनिशा शिंदे गद्य पठन मराठी तिल सुप्रसिद्ध उतारा घरात हवे आजी अजोबा घर असावे घरासार के नकोत मस्तिया भीती घर असावे घरासार के नकोत मस्तिया भीती घराला घर पर दिन केवल मी माझे भाई को माझी मुले मंजे घर नहीं घर कसा भरले ले असावे ता घरात आजियो सब असावे आठवा पूर्वी चकार घर कसा मानसन ने भरले ले होते एकत्र कुटुंब पद्धती होता घरा घरात दहा दहा पंद्रा पंद्रा मानसे होती बाबा नौकरी कराई से आई मनलाऊं स्वयंपाक कराई ची मुले शारद जाई ची वृद्ध आजीवन मार्गदर्शन कराई से तंचा शब्द प्रमाणभूत असाई जा वाद न साई से घराते लवाता उत्सा जमाना आला एकत्र कुटुंब पद्धति जाऊं विभक्त कुटुंब पद्धति आला आजीवन से स्थान वृद्ध श्रमत के लिए आई बाबा दोगे ही नौकरी ला पैसा चमागे लगले दिवस भर घर बाहर मुले एक तर काना भरत कि वसंग ओपन करने रा बाई चता बैठ आई बाबा ने दर्शन कदी तरी मुलान ला बिचारे आई बाबा असु नहीं तंचा प्रेमला पार की झल्ले ली काय संस्कार होना राशा मुलान वर दोन घटना ची तुलना करा अपन कदी विचार के लाहे काय वक्तिं नाही ना मग आता करा आज नहीं वेळ गेलेली नाही आज ना उद्या प्रत्येक जण आजी आजोबांच्या भूमिकेत जाणार आहे त्यामुळे त्यांचे घरातील स्थान अबाधित राखा उद्या तुमच्या मुलांनी तुम्हाला वृद्धाश्रमाचा रस्ता दाखवला काय वाटेल तुम्हाला आजी आजोबा आपल्या घरातील संस्कार केंद्रे आहे कधी गोष्टीच्या माध्यमातून तर कधी प्रत्यक्ष कृतीतून ती मुलांवर नकळत संस्कार करीत असतात बघा ना लहान मुलांचे प्रेम आई बाबा बेक्षा आजी आजोबावर जास्त असते ती त्यांच्यापासून दूर गेली तर त्यांचा विराह मुलांना सहन होत नाही 
घरातील सर्वच घटनांवर बारकाईने लक्ष ठेवून चांगले वळण लावण्याचा प्रयत्न त्यांच्याकडून होत असतो ग्रँडपा ग्रँडमा आजी आजोबा ग्रँडपा ग्रानी दादा दादी नाव कोणतेही असो संस्कार हाच प्रेमाचा धागा असतो हे सार्थ करण्याचे काम आजी आजोबा करतात आई वडिलांनी मुलावर काहीही चांगले केले नाही हे जर ऐकून घ्यायचं नसेल तर त्यांची जबाबदारी आजी आजोबावर सोपवणे योग्य ठरेल म्हणून ते घराघरात हवेत पूर्वी संध्याकाळ झाली की आजी आजोबा मुलांना देवासमोर बसवून शुभम करती म्हणवण्यास लावत होती आज हे चित्र कुठेच पाहण्यास मिळत नाही विभक्त राहण्यापेक्षा एकत्र राहण्याचा आनंद काही वेगळाच असतो असे म्हणतात ज्या घरातून सतत हसण्याचा आवाज येत असतो त्या वास्तूत कोणताही दोष नसतो विभक्त कुटुंबाचे दरवाजे सतत बंद असतात तर एकत्र कुटुंबाचे दरवाजे कायम उघडे असतात आज सामाजिक वातावरण बदलत चाललेले आहे संगती संगत दोषनाम या न्यायाने मुले बिघडत चाललेली आहे वेळीच त्यांना वाईट संगतीपासून परावृत्त करण्याची गरज आहे हे काम आजी आजोबा करू शकतात एखादी गोष्ट मागायला आई वडिला पुढे मुले घाबरतात मात्र आजी आजोबांकडे ती हक्काने पाहिजे ते मागू शकतात आजी आजोबांचे सातत्याने बडबड असते असा आरोप जरी केला जात असला तरी ती बडबड आपल्या भल्यासाठी असते हे ज्यांना समजते ते आजी आजोबांना वृद्धाश्रमाचा रस्ता दाखवत नाहीत तर त्यांना घरात आदराचे स्थान देतात धन्यवाद Thank you, Anisha. What would you do if you suspected that your friends are going to play a prank on you? Would you be alert? Would you be cautious? Kusum Kumawat of 10th B is now going to narrate one such incident. An Uncomfortable Bed by Guy D. Mapaso One autumn, I went to spend the hunting season with some friends in picardy my friends are fond of practical jokes i do not care to know people who are not when i arrived they gave me a princely reception which at once awakened suspicion in my mind they fired off rifles embraced me made much of me as if they expected to have great fun at my expense i said to myself Look out old fellow they have something in store for you they must have planned some good joke and i am to be the victim of the joke attention during the entire evening everyone laughed in exaggerated fashion i scented a practical joke in the air as a dog scents game but what was it i was watchful restless the hour struck for retiring and the whole household came to escort me to my room why they called to me good night i entered the apartment shut the door and remained standing without moving a single step holding the wax candle in my hand i heard laughter and whispering in the corridor without doubt they were spying on me i cast a glance around the walls the furniture the ceiling the hangings the floor I found nothing to justify suspicion. I heard persons moving about outside my door. I had no doubt they were looking through the keyhole. An idea came into my head. My candles may suddenly go off and leave me in darkness. So I went across to the mantelpiece and lighted all the wax candles that were on it. After that, I cast another glance around me, carefully examining the apartment. I inspected every article one after another still nothing then i cautiously sat down the armchair was solid i did not venture to get into the bed i the night was advancing i ended up coming to the conclusion that i was foolish so i made up my mind to go to the bed but the bed was particularly suspicious looking i pulled at the curtains they seemed to be secure then i suddenly bethought myself of a precaution which i considered ensured safety i caught hold of the side of the mattress gingerly and very slowly 
drew towards me. I dragged all these objects into the very middle of the room facing the entrance door. Then I made my bed as best as I could at some distance from the suspected bedstead. Then I extinguished all the candles and groping my way, slipped under the bedclothes. For at least another hour, I remained awake, starting at the slightest sound. Everything seemed quiet in the house. I fell asleep. I must have been in a deep sleep for a long time. But all of a sudden, I was awakened by the fall of a heavy body tumbling right on top of my own. And at the same time, I received on my face, on my neck and on my chest a burning liquid which made me utter howl of pain and a dreadful noise as if a sideboard laden with plates and dishes had fallen down almost deafened me. I was smoothering beneath the weight that was crushing me and preventing me from moving. I stretched out my hand to find out what was the nature of this object. I felt a face, a nose and whiskers. Then, with all my strength, I launched a blow at this face. But I immediately received a hail of coughings, which made me jump straight out of the soak sheet into the corridor, the door of which I found open. Oh heavens, it was broad daylight. The noise brought my friends hurrying into my apartment, and we found, sprawling over my improvised bed, the dismayed valet, who, while bringing me my morning cup of tea, had tripped over this obstacle into the middle of the room and fallen on his stomach, spilling my breakfast over my face in spite of himself. The precautions I had taken in closing the shutters and going to sleep in the middle of the room had only brought about the practical joke I had been trying to avoid. Oh, how they all laughed that day. Thank you. Thank you, Kusum. That was delightful. Bonsoir, everyone. Next, we have Pranav Pawar from Class 10 D, who is going to narrate a poem in French by Jack Sprevot called The Accent Graph. This poem is between a student, Hamlet, and his French professor about the verb être in French. The student is lost and was daydreaming, and he couldn't answer the question. Let's see what happens next. The Avenue Aprana. Not Sangrav by Jack Spravat. Parols Galimad. The Professor. Elevam led, lelevam led, sursodon, a kua, pardon, keskisapa, keskilia, keskese, the professor, me content, vune pue para ponder press com tut lemon, pa possible, vuzet on cordon se noises, lelevam led, etra, would no paetra don se noises, the professor, sufi, pat on the maniers. Et conjugues moala va betra, com tut lemon, si es tut, circa ja vuidimon. Lele vamlet, to be. The professor, of francais, s'il vous plaît, com tut lemon. Lele vamlet, bia, monsieur, il conjugue. Je suis, ou je ne suis pas. Tu es, ou tu n'es pas. Il est, ou il n'est pas. Nous sommes, Unus ne sompa, la professor. Excessive mame content. Messi et vu, kini et pa, ma povre ami. Le le vamlet. Si es exit, monsieur le professor. Je suis, ou, je ne suis pa. Et dans le fond, a, a la reflexion. Etre, ou, ne pa etre. Si es pot etre, o si la question. Merci. Thank you. Thank you, Pranav. Love is when someone else's happiness is far greater than your own happiness. 
Let us now listen to a poem of love recited by Vani Baranwal of class 10B. The Unfinished Puzzle by Susan Wheat. It was a typical autumn evening. She sat with her memories in the pot swing. The crisp air, a gentle hint of what winter would soon bring. He died one year ago today. Her husband of only four years. She never knew of his pain. He had shielded her from his tears. Suddenly, she shivered and went inside, feeling so very cold. But she knew it wasn't the cold evening air. It came from within her soul. She glanced around the room. So many memories, so much pain. Then she saw the unfinished puzzle, all of him that remained. His worldly possession shared with others, her memories, their only tie, except for the unfinished puzzle, afraid to remove it, not knowing why. He had chosen the puzzle, a scene of mountains reaching high. Together, they had matched the pieces, talked of climbing the mountains and touching the sky. One piece of the puzzle was missing. She had searched to her dismay. He said, don't worry about the unfinished puzzle. The missing piece will be found one day. She reached for their photo album. The first time since his death, she needed to see his face now. She needed to see his depth now. She turned the pages slowly. So many memories, so much pain. And within the pages of the album, an envelope with her name. The envelope contained a letter from him and the puzzle's missing piece. She read the words with longing and found in them, release. I knew you would not look at these pictures until you understood within your soul that a brief time together was a gift and the life together was whole. I give to you this missing piece of the unfinished puzzle we shared. It's the very top of the mountain. And I know that you are there. It's time for you to see the other side. A new life for you will unfold. Seek your new beginning and the stories yet untold. Now put the missing piece at the mountain top so high. And if you ever need me, just reach up and touch the sky. Thank you. Thank you, Vani. प्रिय श्रोताओ पुस्तको वाचवा आपने ज्ञान मे पुस्तको अपना साचा मित्र छे सारा पुस्तको वाचवा अपना में सारा गुणों नो विकास थे पुस्तको आपने अपना व्यक्तित्व नो परिचय करे ए विषय आप सबनी समक्ष धोरण दस बो विद्यार्थी पूर्व पटेल पुस्तको मैत्री विषय पर पोता वक्तव्य प्रस्तुत कर सुक्स आर आर बेस्ट फ्रेंड्स दे हेव नो डिमांड्स एंड नो कम्प्लेन दे गीव अस एंडलेस नॉलेज सो टूडे आई वुड लाइक टू रिक्वेस्ट आर बेस्ट फ्रेंड पूर्व पटेल फ्रॉम क्लास टेन्थ बी आभार धर्मजीत पुस्तको मैत्री આપણે અભ્યાસક્રમ માટે નિયત થયેલા પુસ્તકો વાંચીએ છીએ તેનાથી આપણા જ્ઞાનમાં વધારો થાય છે પરંતુ આ પુસ્તકોમાંથી મળતું જ્ઞાન મર્યાદિત હોય છે તેથી આપણે પાઠ્ય પુસ્તક ઉપરાંત અન્ય પુસ્તકો પણ વાંચવા જોઈએ પુસ્તકોની મૈત્રી માણસોના જીવનમાં બહુ જ મહત્વનો ભાગ ભજવે છે લોકમાન્ય તિલક કહેતા હું 
नरक में सारा पुस्तक नो स्वागत करीश कारण के ज्या सारा पुस्तक हसे त्या आपोप स्वर्ग बनी जैसे महाभारत रायण जो ग्रंथो भारतीय संस्कृति टकवी रखा बहुत महत्व भाग भजो पुस्तको अपना सारा मित्र जेवा सुख दुख में आप आखा विश्व न सफर करने अनुभव मे सारा पुस्तक हिम्मत बहादुरी क्षमा जो गुणों ना विकास थे सारा पुस्तक अरिशा जेवा मोबाइल पसार कर परतु आम छता आज सारा पुस्तक न महत्व ओछो नहीं थो आज सारा पुस्तक छपाए वंचाए खरा आप अपना जीवन घड़तर करना पुस्तकों की मैत्री ने केड़वी साग्य मार्गदर्शन प्राप्त करे आभार थैंक यू पूर्व लेडीज एंड जेंटलमेन वॉर इज डिस्ट्रक्शन वाइल यूनिवर्सल पीस इज कंस्ट्रक्शन वॉर इज डेथ while universal peace is life shivam patel of 10th a will now recite a an excerpt from the holy writing an excerpt from abdul bahas tablets to the hague 17 december 1919 this recent war has proved to the world and the people that war is destruction while universal peace is construction war is death while peace is life war is a rapacity and blood thirstiness while peace is beneficence and humaneness war is an appurtenance of the world of nature while peace is of the foundation of the religion of god war is darkness upon darkness while peace is heavenly light War is the destroyer of the edifice of mankind, while peace is the everlasting life of the world of humanity. War is like a devouring wolf, while peace is like the angels of heaven. War is the struggle for existence, while peace is mutual aid and cooperation among the people of the world in the good pleasure of the true one in the heavenly realm. there is not one soul whose conscience does not testify to this day that there is no more important matter in the world than that of universal peace every just one bears witness to this and adores that esteemed assembly because its aim is that this darkness may be changed into light this blood thirstiness into kindness this torment into bliss this hardship into ease and this enmity into fellowship therefore the effort of those esteemed souls is worthy of praise and commendation but the wise soul who are aware of the essential relationship emitting from the realities of things consider that one single matter cannot by itself influence the human reality as it ought and should for until the minds of men become united no more important matter can be accomplished at present universal peace is a matter of great importance but unity of conscience is essential so that the foundation of this matter may become secure its establishment firm and its edifice strong thank you thank you shiva 
we now come to an end of this wonderful program i'm sure that you must have enjoyed the performances and i'm also certain that you will carry these pieces deep in your heart for many days to come such is the power of eloquence i request priyanshi thakur to conclude this great evening thank you aditi dear parents i think my friends deserve a loud round of applause for their hard work and dedication to make this evening a memorable one i thank everyone here for taking out time from their busy schedules and for appreciating and motivating the participants i thank the school and ms suniti for creating this opportunity for us to enhance our eloquence and perform before our dear parents i also thank mr shinde and all our teachers for guiding and supporting us in this endeavor now i request the parents if they wish to speak to say a few words hello dear children of uh, new era and the lovely teachers of new era all your performance was excellent one after the other i don't have words to express my happiness in watching you all online and really happy you people have prepared well done well keep it up keep up keep up the spirits and follow the words what you have taught us we have told us you have to follow it and you know be bright in your future thank you priyanshi continue i request mr shinde to express his thoughts acha nobody else is there no parent want to express themselves don't feel shy please yes mr shinde today is a day of expression dear parents you know the children are expressing you also must express yourself if you are very happy let us uh, also hear from you anyone else Uh, Mr. Shinde, I would like to say something. Please, please carry on. Yeah. So um, I'm very much impressed and well pleased to see how well the children were presenting their pieces, like in Hindi, in English, in Marathi, in Gujarati, in French. Uh, really, hats off to the teachers who went on taking their um, practice. You know, I've been seeing my own daughter practice with her teacher. and they were really really very patient and they really took great efforts to help the children of ours to perform today and indeed it was a beautiful evening an eloquent evening a beautifully performed work by all the children of 10th standard and i really want to applaud the teachers as well as the students for this hard work of theirs thank well you, done thank you jyoti ma'am for expressing uh, yourself appreciating the school's work thank you ms lc for appreciating all the hard work done by the students and the teachers thank you so much anybody else would like to express any other parent okay looks like uh, they waiting for the dinner possibly <laughs> so dear friends uh, uh, a very good evening to one and all present today Uh, dear respected uh, parents teachers and my uh, beloved yeah. students dear friends uh, you all know that uh, believe in our uh, system of school firstly i would like to uh, tell you what we believe in is that the highest service which can be rendered to man uh, by man to the almighty is the the training and education of the children dear friends with this belief you know that every year we have certain programs which we run our run our in school you know but dear friends this time is a little different but then what priyanshi was stating in the beginning that she is missing the auditorium she is missing that uh, eloquent evening you know which we used to have a very disciplined program you know it was let me tell you priyanshi and all the, those who are present now that it was a wonderful wonderful program you know i did not miss anything actually 
I felt that I am sitting in the auditorium. One by one, the child is coming on the stage, holding their hands, telling the title of their particular speech or prose or poetry, and delivering the speech eloquently. So, dear friends, it was a wonderful to see this wonderful evening. This time, there was a difference. Unlike we have physical elocution. The difference was this every year or every alternate year rather we have elocution in different uh, uh, you know eras or areas rather that we have prose we have poetry you know but in english this time we have had in gujarati we had in marathi we had in in uh, french and of course in hindi so it was not such a easy thing first time we are doing this and that to online just imagine to coordinate this with the students, to the parents, and the teachers themselves, taking out of time. A lot of time is required, making sure that, you know, no, there is no compromise with the regular work. And then doing this. It was not a, it was not a simple thing, dear friend, dear friends, you know. So, so eloquent speech is not from mouth to ear, dear friends but rather from heart to heart. And today I saw that, you know, that all the speeches, you know, were from heart to heart. It's not just from mouth to ear, you know, just be okay, fine. You are speaking. I'm listening. That was not the case. That's why we have had so many examples in the history that made history because of speeches, dear friends. There are so many examples in the movies that, you know, you remember some dialogues because the way they are expressed. That is very important. And that's what this school is school of opportunities, dear friends. The school has taken care of each and every program, you know, which are mentioned in the calendar, dear friends. We have not missed anything. The barrier, we may not be present here basically physically, but we made sure that we reach out to our students through online platform. And it was a great support by the students and by the parents also, dear friends. And you see that all great leaders are good readers. I see that the wonderful hard work which they have done, you know, it is commendable without losing any other aspect of their uh, education, dear friends. This has a lot of background work. It is not a mere um, a program of two hours. It started with a series of meetings with Miss uh, Suniti and all the first and second language teachers. Then there was a homework given to you all, if you remember. You prepared beautiful videos. These videos you had uploaded. Moreover, our teachers, all our teachers of first and second languages, they all recorded the speeches so that you can go through that, understand and follow the same. It was a great hard work by the teachers, dear friends. So our teachers are role models. They are not just telling you to do it, but they themselves did it. And then told you to do it, you know. Usually what happens is, okay, chalo, student, this is your piece and you, you learn. But they, they did not do that. They themselves recorded, send it to you and requested to go through that and then send it. After looking at also, there were corrections made. You know, so a lot of hard work has been put in while others were having this vacation. These wonderful teachers of New High School, Panjgani, they were all spending time for watching their videos and giving feedback, dear friends, you know. Moreover, this, the, the, the pieces which were selected, it may be prose or poetry or what sort, maybe, or the excerpts from the holy writings, dear friends. There were such a touching uh, speeches and the excerpts from the holy writings and also the poems, you know, which makes us reflect on actually, you know, uh, what we have learned, you know. One such was in Marathi also, you know, talking about, uh, you know, the, the value of parents, the value of grandparents, which is today's reality, dear friends. So in this Corona time also, it has taught us so much. It has taken back in the past, in the history, to see that what we were actually, what was our culture. 
so there she spoke about the joint family so this corona has also made us learn so many things one of the thing is tolerance one of the thing is getting together as a family one of the another thing is that hygiene wash hands before you eat keep your shoes outside before you get inside your house you know tolerate each others understand each others test understand each others you know likes dislikes and value them respect them just such a beautiful thing you know in this particular pandemic time also this has taught lot of things we also learned that to value time we also learned that we need very very few things in life we also learned that yes we must give time to our children so when the children ask they if they ask money you know you must give them but also give them time which is very very precious you know so these are all were taught you know with this particular pandemic and such a beautiful program was carried out dear friends you know so we are very very happy to see that uh, this kind of programs which we are running you know not a single program we are missing it out and we are happy to see that the parents also like this they are writing to the school through mails they are writing through whatsapps you know appreciating the work of the teachers this also shows the culture of those parents it also shows that yes how they value their teachers where we have teachers as a noble profession where the teachers are kept at the pedestal we call guru brahma guru vishnu we come from this culture so i really value each and every one's view and participation dear friends as far as our parents are concerned also dear friends one more thing i would like to express is that you know because there a lot of hard work has been put in i cannot uh, end my speech without uh, thanking you all so firstly i wish to thank uh, ms pawar uh, who has been uh, very instrumental it's very near and dear to uh, her and all the language teachers this particular program you know uh, elocution every time a lot of joe she will not believe you know after the school gets over we all run to the auditorium you know come on here come on there you know and then we start practicing in all the areas of the school made with the roof made with the balcony made with the corridor made with the auditorium all places we practice you know uh, so i wish to thank her for all the efforts she has made uh, in the school hours after the school hours you know the efforts which are made are commendable so thank you miss pawar for all the efforts you have made and steer the students you know in the right direction i must thank uh, ms gulrez of course her program is there tomorrow but then part of the uh, english faculty i must thank her also for all the efforts they have been making and preparing the students you know so i thank ms gulrez and of course we have uh, ms alia the faculty head of english faculty and also the panel member who has been present in this particular elocution and who has been also very instrumental in uh, in this area right from the beginning is very near and dear to uh, miss alia about this elocution the, the topic of elocution itself so i thank her i'm sure that um, uh, you know if this particular elocution was in the in the hall it would have been different thing but uh, yes all together we all enjoyed and we everybody each one of us were present enjoyed everyone's speech dear friends so thank you miss alia thank for you, joining us today and thank you sir thank and giving a support to the students and also the teachers guidance thank Today, you for your wonderful I, words of appreciation thank, thank, you, thank you sir you so for the wonderful words thank you miss sujata uh, miss preeti miss uh, aditi and uh, miss rupali now as i told this is the first time we are doing friends first time we are doing this you know and um, they were all doing for the first time and asking how sir what is uh, uh, what is going to happen i said you have done your best you know and i told same in the morning to uh, miss sujata also miss power also i told and miss priti had come as a same thing you give your best give your best because it was online so we had little bit uh, concern what will happen whether the technology will support us or not whether the lights electricity will support or not all these things were there with us but then yes god is kind i'm sure he also wanted to listen to all the wonderful children who have expressed you know such a beautiful speeches and 
prose and poetry so he was also listening i'm sure you know so i thank ms sujatha who has been a, a a faculty head for the second languages who has been very instrumental very experienced teacher who's been guiding the other second language teachers also so thank you for beautiful speeches you have chosen thank you ms rupali the marathi i already spoke about anisha you know who who had took us back in the joint family and all those chosen words i thank you for the wonderful speeches you chosen miss priti was little uh, worried because she is doing for the first time but then let me tell you all the students of gujarati was telling all the gujarati students are there but they are studying in english medium school but yes in spite of that they spoke a very fluent gujarati you know so i must uh, thank them uh, the wonderful students who express in in uh, Uh, in gujarati and what to say about french you know <laughs> french uh, i also don't understand i understand hindi gujarati marathi you know but then i don't understand french but then through these slides uh, through the stories you know to the props uh, the pranam which are expressed with the props you know it was so easy to understand miss aditi all the efforts you have made because french is not our language you know is it easy more is it to express in gujarati or marathi or hindi or other in english also but to express in french is a difficult thing dear friends you know so i i really thank um, ms aditi for the wonderful efforts you have made uh, for making this particular you know program successful in the first time we had this elocution in french also so this was another thing dear friends you know um, as far as uh, thanking is concerned also wish to thank um, all the wonderful students who were very obedient who listened to the teachers uh, instructions very carefully you know and uh, they exactly followed the instructions given by the teacher so i want to uh, thank them and uh, lots of blessing to my lovely children you know who have today uh, had a wonderful show you know because they they were the one who did efforts during the vacation time also who recorded the videos you know so i thank uh, uh, all our wonderful children you know i want to thank the parents you know who made out time uh, because it's a very busy time but to sit and listen to all the children not my own child but to listen to other children is also a good uh, quality you know and a good encouragement to all the wonderful children we have had you know uh, so uh, thank you uh, dear teachers for uh, dear parents for uh, being present today so i wish to thank all the panel members who have given time to time suggestions you know in making all these programs successful so my big thank you to all the members of the panel and i wish to thank of course ms suniti uh, head of administration who has been uh, a great force behind this wonderful uh, programs and all aspect it may be academic or it may be non academic in all the programs her uh, force of guidance you know her motivation her support in all spheres of education is so much that we all feel motivated all the time and we drive our energy into positive path so dear friends a big thank you to ms suniti also for all the guidance she has been uh, giving us to see that the school runs more than what we run usually you know in a normal time dear friends so these are few things which i wanted to express so if i have forgotten somebody you know of course uh, the technical team which is behind today mr yogesh was there you know, who was helping us i wish to thank him also all the ict department you know we wish to thank them the maintenance department also who made this successful all the anchors today i found the anchors also i i i i must mention that you know all the anchors my special appreciation my special love my special blessings to those anchors you know who wonderfully actually you know uh, carried out this program we are no we, see this is what the meaning of education actually we have empowered our students who can run the program they don't need us <laughs> and this is a true education that we empower our students who can run the program we can run the program there is not a difficult thing our teachers can run the program but there was no teachers role today you saw the teachers role was behind the screen which they have done hours and hours they have spent but today i must tell you that the anchors and the participants were the true heroes and true heroines for this show so it's my great salute to all the wonderful students you know who had done a wonderful job 
God bless you all. Okay, I will end my uh, few words with a uh, uh, with a with a quote as as always. So it says that speak in such a way, speak in such a way that people love to listen to you. Speak in such a way that people love to listen to you, and listen in such a way that people will love to speak to you, dear friends. So these are my few words to you all. I'm sure we will also have tomorrow for class nine. So I wish all the teachers the very best. And if the parents would like to join tomorrow also, they are most welcome. Thank you one and all. Once again, God bless you all. Take care of yourself. It's a very difficult time. Take care of yourself. Stay in so that the corona can stay out. Good night. Bye. Thank you, sir. Priyanshi. Good night. Bye bye. Priyanshi. Thank you. Thank you once again. Good night. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you teachers. Thank you, teachers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you well done. Bye bye. Thank, Take care. Thank you, Miss. Thank, Thank you, Miss. Bye, Miss. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you, teachers. Yes. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Thank you, parents. Good night. Thank you, everyone. Now you may leave. Thank you. Students, thank you. Well done. Thank you. Thank you so much.